This week on Behind the Message, Jesus is the bread of life that saves. Mary Poppins is fully explained. And Wes gives us the word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Hey church family, we are still here. <laughs> we are on month number two of Behind the Message with Daniel. And did you Jennifer. think we would make it this long? Nope, did not at all. And here's what's happening. So the mask mandate was just extended in Washington County until the end of September, just to keep you all aware and to keep you all at a safe distance. Um, We're neither at a safe distance no. nor are we wearing masks. Exactly. And um, schools are beginning <laughs> to reopen. So things are looking a little crazy um, around my house still, but maybe they'll be heading back to school pretty soon. Um, I am going to say this this morning. Teachers are my heroes, um, deserve all the prayers and all the thanks we can mm -hmm. ever give them after a month of having my kiddos at home. Um, yes, teachers deserve all the praise. Now, before we jump into um, the material for today, which is awesome, I had a quick question for Daniel. Now, I'm ready. Daniel, I'm ready. Daniel brought the message um, this past weekend, and I was in the 11 o'clock service on Sunday, so I'm not sure if this same comment was made. What service were you in? None. Okay, so Daniel, don't look at my notes. Daniel just threw out a question randomly after talking about setting up the context for John 6. You're both so nervous. I am. Um, I'm really nervous. About the feeding of the 5,000. I'm not nervous. Wes is making me nervous. No, no, yeah. I'm nervous for you. Oh, is yeah. that what it is? No, it's really yeah. not, a, it's not, a, it's not a bad thing, okay. but I just needed some fuller explanation that you really right. didn't have time to go into. Right. So when discussing the feeding of the 5,000 mm -hmm. and the disciples were handing out the food to mm -hmm. the people, you said something along the lines of, it was a Mary Poppins kind of moment. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Did he say that at mm -hmm. 9 o'clock? He went all Mary Poppins on them or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that's something, what I said. That was, yeah, yeah. That's what, okay, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Would you like to further elaborate what in the world that means? Just real quick, because we have other very serious material. Have you not watched Mary Poppins? Have you not watched Mary Poppins? Yes, but what does it mean that they're that he's handing out? I don't. I didn't get the connection. Really, Wes? I'll tell oh you. my goodness, Wes! The bag. She pulls all the so stuff out of the little bag. He's it. like, oh, here's an umbrella. No, here's a whale or whatever else she pulls out of the thing. I guess I haven't watched it in a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's clarification for anyone who needed so, it. So no, no, wait. It, it, it's you gotta understand. This is like the coolest bag ever. Like it's a bag. Are you gonna it's put just... a clip of Mary Poppins? You're gonna just insert a clip of Mary Poppins right here. We could plug it, plug the Disney. All right. So <laughs> you, you pull, you keep pulling out of the bag yeah. things that wouldn't even fit in the bag. Okay. And it's just like a magic bag, and anything it just keeps coming out. It okay. just keeps coming Never out. Ending. And so here you are. You got okay. this little bag, and there's just a fish. And oh, you want a fish, and you want a fish, and you want. And after you've gone through like you know five thousand fish, you'd be like. How many yeah. fish can be in that bag? I thought it was a great illustration. Okay. Uh, it was that... awesome. <laughs> We're going to move that on. That didn't go the way you well, wanted it to at all. Oh! Oh, you flipped it on me. Okay, never mind. All right. So I do want to say this. You guys have sent in questions. Continue to do that. Um, you can email questions in. We got some great ones this week. Some of them will be hitting today, and some of them we may be saving um, for a little bit of a later date. But keep sending them in. We'll answer as many as we can. You can send them in, and it's going to go right down here again. BTM, right? BTM at tcbchurch.org. So you can send your questions in then. So anyway, we're going to jump right in. Um, we have got... A friend with us. Would you like to explain why Mr. <laughs> West Tucker is here with us today? Oh, Wes is with us. So here's the thing. Uh, right now, <laughs> for, for, friends are fun. This week is getting a little slack. Oh man, we're, we're gonna we got we got some work to do. Okay. Yeah. So Wes is here. One of the things that we normally do this time of year is we have a connect day to help new people connect to uh, the church, to connect to life groups, to connect to study groups. And as you can imagine, that's a lot different. It, it, it's hard. We have new people who are coming into our church. We have people that are trying to get plugged into life groups and study groups, and you may be watching right now. And so Wes is just our champion for these things. Yeah. And so wanted to have get Wes on and just let him kind of talk to you guys about how you can connect, lean into some resources, and get around people, whether virtually or in person, and just make sure you know all that Tri-Cities is trying to do to help you connect in community in this season. So, I mean, you're up first. Just kind of give us an overview where would you start? How would you get us going? Yeah, so one thing, and I think you mean like for everybody, not just adults too, right? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. one thing, this is really, I'm really appreciative and really thankful for this from our family team, is if you haven't seen the Aim the Family webpage that consolidates all the, so my family has from kindergarten through college, yeah. 
and both element I mean elementary we have a student again and so aggregating that to one place is really really helpful um, aim the family yeah. Thursday Tuesday Tuesday yeah. I think is when it comes out and then the aim the family website mm-hmm. something I just discovered this week that I'm really thankful for is a, a separate update each each week from each ministry for each age group yeah. and so like I saw your question this week uh, on Facebook you were polling people to see how many emails they get from their teachers and so when I saw that Austin and Laura and I guess Stephanie had consolidated all this stuff to one page and I thought oh can you talk to the, like the school system <laughs> So that's great. Yeah. All the resources on one page are really good. It is. It's huge. Um, and I, if you haven't watched the videos, um, kind of the setup, the FTP setup videos, they're really, really helpful. Um, preschool is like five minutes or so. Yeah. My preschooler that's now a kindergartner is really mad because she doesn't get to watch Becca all the time. <laughs> no offense, Austin. She can still watch Anna, Becca. She can, right. No <laughs> offense. Um, but then those are just really great videos yeah. to kind of help springboard into to conversation. Yeah. So. And, and the neat thing is, as, as a church, which is – the main reason we're doing this, and it's the reason the family, the uh, family ministries is working so hard, is that we're still a church family, and we still want to connect as a church family. And it's just more difficult now, um, but no less important, more important now than it's ever been. So, um, they are family ministries team is just doing some great yeah. things. Um, our students are are getting together both virtually and a little bit in person now, outside, socially distanced. They're mm-hmm. they're being super creative with all of that, um, which is fun to watch. Our elementary kids are are able to do um, jump in on some fun videos. And one thing that I loved loved this week that came out was um, my kids got a packet in the mail. Uh, my elementary kids got a packet in the mail, and it has um, cards, blank note cards, and a letter from our kids' ministry and an address of one of our senior adults. And so mm-hmm. my kids, my two girls, are going to be writing letters to some of the senior adults in our church throughout this semester just to love on them and not just a one-sided thing. I mean, we really want our senior adults to speak back into the lives of our kids. And so there, there's some great, um, great things happening out there still so we need to take advantage of those as a church family and, and enjoy um, connecting mm-hmm. in different ways now I guess so anyway. there's, a, there's a lot of resources and again you can go a lot of places but all of it is condensed on the news page right. mm-hmm. so if through the app or the website go to the news page click on news uh, tcbchurch.org slash news mm-hmm. and all this stuff is there so you can kind of navigate through all these resources so a lot for our families we got some stuff for our adults too talking yeah this is really that. important so we had our first in-person discover tri-cities last sunday and so if you're really new here and you're watching maybe this for the first time um, and haven't been to discover tri-cities yet it's the fourth sunday each month at 10 30. so on the website tcbchurch.org slash discover. You can see the times and you can register. We'd love to have you meet with us and, and help us help you find out more about our church. It's a great way to connect. And then that serves as a springboard then to kind of help say, hey, I want help. Yeah. Help me connect. That's yeah. really helpful. Because then when 10 of you get right here in front of us, then we can kind of main, kind of just really um, really focus in on who's there and help connect you to right. a specific group that's helpful. Yeah. For you. It's neat. It's a neat thing. And our, our church staff, our, our teachers are working hard. I know my girls got phone calls. I mean, this was the week that supposed to be kids promoting up to mm-hmm. the next class, and that's always a big thing at church. And they got calls from their new group leaders and yeah. um, just loving on them a little bit. And so, um, anyway, yeah. everybody's really working hard. So, church yeah. family, um, thank everybody as you see them, um, but press into some of these resources, too, because it's a, it's a big deal. Okay, so we're going to move into a section we call What Got You um, that Daniel and I try to do um, every week. Wes is going to stay in here for this one because Daniel preached this week, so we also want to hear um, from someone else about what got you during the message besides Mary Poppins. Uh, but this is just a short takeaway, um, something that stuck with us um, from the message, something that maybe propelled us to action. So we're going we're gonna to go into that. So Wes, what got you um, this weekend? So uh, we've been reading the Gospels on the weekend already too. Last week and the sermon was just kind of through a few different chapters of John, but yeah. the whole book of John is really John is presenting Jesus as divine. Mm-hmm. It's one of his purposes. John 20, 31, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And so in this, these passages in John chapter 6, there are several places that we really saw Jesus' divinity. Mm-hmm. One that I love is when Jesus hears the disciples grumbling, like in verse 60 and in 61, the text said, Jesus, knowing in himself 
that his disciples were grumbling about this says, does this offend you? Yeah. So I, I always just imagine this scene. He's got done teaching these difficult things. And as Daniel said yesterday, kind of ups the ante every yeah. time. They're like, what? And then he knows already his divinity, his omniscience is on display right. and turns and says, why are you? Yeah. What's wrong? Like, And he already knows. And then later he even a few verses down says, there are some of you who do not believe. So to me, the book of John, and specifically this passage, just really shows us and reminds us, we've seen Jesus in his humanity, Mm -hmm. but you really see Jesus in his divinity here. Yeah, love that. Um, Something that was, the message was powerful this weekend. Um, It was really awesome, but something that stood out to me is um, your statements that you made that came out of John 37, and um, which was an incredible verse. It said, all that the Father gives to me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. And what that brought to my attention in a fresh new way is that there will always be this tension between God's sovereignty, man's responsibility, and and salvation, and the glory of that and the mystery of that. But for you to say that, number one, the Father gives to Jesus all who will be saved, and the second thing was once given, Jesus will never cast any of them away, Um, It was such a moment for me to take all the questions and the mystery, that it's okay, I mean, to ponder the deep things of God and to seek his face, but to always lay those questions at the feet of his throne. His complete sovereignty is over all of that. And so that's that's what got me from the message this week. It was was powerful. It was freeing for me, um, I think. So anyway, that leads us into... um, sermon recap from you just to kind of hit the highlights as we've kind of told you what got us but I, I need some help oh. you ever seen Price is Right oh yeah you know the come on down see I can't say that for myself so I, I've, I got, I've got to say it. I've got to go away and she refuses so I, I need your best uh, is it, what is it what's the guy's name Bob Barker no no Bob Barker's the host who was the guy that did the Rod. Rod, Rod uh, off camera, we get the answer. It's, he, it's he Rod. He has a shiny jacket. I he, want a shiny jacket. You, you, know, you can't get the shiny jacket, but I need, I need a good, okay. strong, Let's you know. See. Daniel Broyles, come on down. That's what I'm talking about. It's not. Oh, my word. John 6, verse 48. I want to read that to you. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. Speaking of himself, this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. Our big truth was Jesus is the bread of life. And one of the things that was just, I think, incredible there in John 6, it's not just this general statement of, hey, like, this is good for you. Mm -hmm. You know, eat some bread, it's good for you. No, it is the declaration that Jesus is the only bread of life that he and he alone saves, that he and he alone sustains. And he uses manna as that contrast. And so he acknowledges this thing that the crowd wants, this sign gift, this reference back to manna, this great work of the Lord, even in their history. It still ended in death. It still ended in separation. And so Jesus here makes this incredible statement that he is the bread of life. And there's nowhere else for us to go. You were talking about what got you as we kind of got into this section. And I feel like that's Peter's conclusion at the end. Where else would I go? I may not understand it all, but you are the son of God and my faith is in you. And so we talked about three just quick implications of that for us as Jesus followers. First, Jesus is the bread that satisfies. We're not going to find satisfaction ultimately in anything else. Mm -hmm. He and he alone will bring us joy, peace, hope. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only bread that saves. Uh, He is the only bread that's actually going to keep our bodies through eternity. And so that leads us to our third one. Jesus is the bread that sustains. He keeps us. And you mentioned that. And I think that's a powerful truth that's taught there in John 6. And for all of us who live in the midst of suffering and stress, and again, sin outside of us and sin within us, to be reminded Jesus has us. Mm -hmm. Not by your work, your work is the belief, your work is the faith, that's what Jesus says. You just believe, trust Jesus, he has you. And to realize that my eternal security is wrapped up in his grip, not my own, oh, that's so good for me. And in that, I can find rest. And so that's our big truth, Jesus is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. We, man, love going through John 6, I thought it was great. So let's talk about it for a minute. You guys kind of jump in, I I, I talked through it. 
what were kind of the big talking points that come out that you just want to go a little further with? The thing that I, I honestly, you, it, it pressed me into want to go dig and study a little bit more was when you talked about that sign gift of the manna in the Old Testament, which is what they reference here as well in John 6, um, that sign gift and then Jesus being the final sign, the final revelation, the fulfillment. And we know through studying that Jesus is the fulfillment of every picture that was ever drawn in the Old Testament. But seeing him as that beautiful fulfillment of the sign of the manna in the Old Testament, and now he is the everlasting eternal bread of life. And, and it got me even thinking, I was, I was actually reading my quiet time this morning, just some of the characteristics of what the manna was. And as glorious as it was, and as much of a miracle as it was, it still disappeared. It still evaporated. They still, it never satisfied them. Like they still grumbled and wanted something else besides this bread. And um, to think that what that pointed to, Christ being the fulfillment of that, that perfectly satisfies. And, and um, Jesus, I think, loves to provide within us a holy dissatisfaction with everything else to search for him, to seek him out in that. But we chase all these other little manas mm. everywhere. Wasn't that incredible in that passage? They're seeking a sign. Yeah. They're like, hey, give us a, give sign. Us a sign. And Jesus is just standing in front of them going, hey, guys, yeah. I am the sign. Right. Yeah. I thought that was just powerful. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was great. Yeah. And, and you look at the disciples and you go, oh, foolish people, do you not see him standing right in front of you? Yeah. But yeah, we're the exact same way. Yeah, and I think a great thing for people to reflect on and think about this week is what other things yeah. we let, we try to satisfy ourselves in and our longings in. It can be other relationships. Our life group talked about this last night. One of the one of the very first things we try to do is find satisfaction in other people and mm -hmm. other relationships. Um, and even in accomplishments and pursuits and finding identity in mm -hmm. things that are not, it's like Jesus is standing here. Mm -hmm. What else do you think would better satisfy your greatest need? And I think that's where you screw it up, too. We forget our greatest need right. is to be reconciled to the Father, yeah. who is giving us to the Son anyway. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I think the satisfaction part is a, a huge everyday, day-by-day -day mm -hmm. type of sanctification element that mm -hmm. is, jumps out here in this passage. Yeah. Sweet. It was powerful. We guys, all right, so we got some questions that came in through the mailbox and we want to make sure we get some time for those. Yeah. So uh, here's the first one. Are you ready? You ready? You guys ready? <laughs> no, because I want to ask the question you'll answer, but go ahead. Uh, all right. So we're actually going to hold this question. We're not going to answer it right now. And we've been talking, what we're going to try to do is some of these really big questions, we're going to have a special episode that we try to get to maybe once a month, once every couple of months, to come back and really spend some time and talk through some of these just really big questions that are more um, uh, contemporary issue type yeah. questions. And so one of those that came in uh, is... Because you all took Daniel's challenge seriously. And so a question did come in for me in particular. And um, it's a pretty involved, it's a good one. It's a pretty involved one. And so we're going to not answer it. No, I'm just kidding. So, so I just, I just want to point out something. What? There was a hard question for Jennifer. There was. For Jennifer. Which is why Jennifer is now asking the questions that are going to be answered by you two no. today. No, 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 no. And then... Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Who can younger women look up to, to kind of model for them uh, what it means to be a godly woman mm -hmm. in today's culture? Mm -hmm. And so that gets into a lot of biblical womanhood. There's mm -hmm. kind of some breakdown to those questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to that one in an episode to come. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about biblical womanhood and what that needs to look like in our society and how... Uh, young women specifically, teenagers, 20-somethings, can look up to older women and who they should, who, who and kind of how they yeah. should learn from in that context. So that's a great question. Yeah. We'll get back to that one. One for this week related to what we talked about with our share service mm -hmm. and our prayer service to go advance the gospel. How do I share the gospel with someone that doesn't believe the Bible is the inspired word of God, but a book? that has through translations become untrue. So in other words, how do you share the gospel with someone when there's not a belief that mm -hmm. the Bible is the word of God? Yeah, all right. So answer this a couple different ways. The first thing, let's address the it's translation. A great question, yeah, by the way. let's address the translation issue for just a second, okay? War and Peace, Les Miserables, all written in, not English, right? 
So translate the <laughs> translation issue and the inspiration issue. I love your translation issue that you just said, all written in not English. Yeah, right. Well, because okay. I don't – French, fine. Russian, whatever. Yeah. Okay. yeah, whatever. They ain't English. Okay. <laughs> Is that better? No. <laughs> so inspiration and translation are separate issues. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing. So I think there's a good thing to think about here too. A lot of people that might ask this or want to bring this up in a conversation, they don't even know what they're asking. So you got to don't just answer the question. Define and reframe their question to be about the issues that really matter and are really at stake here. The translation thing, is that's a... A red herring in this conversation. Yeah, Jesus does that in John 4. Oh, you can go back and read yeah. that in the Samaritan woman. Yeah. He reframes the questions exactly again and again yeah. to get back yeah. to the real yeah. issues. So the other thing is, we don't believe absolute truth that comes from an absolute divine being that's set apart and different from us, mm -hmm. that anything he says or does can become untrue or false. Yeah. So translation or study or examination of it or even interpretation of it mm -hmm. doesn't make it doesn't change it. Right. Doesn't make it untrue. So you got mm -hmm. to separate the issues a little bit first. Mm -hmm. um, would be one thing I would say. Tackle inspiration or inerrancy, and translations kind of separately mm -hmm. would be one quick piece of advice. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. So if, a few other things. We just came out of the the service this week. Mm -hmm. Proclaim the truth, yeah. and trust the Spirit. Yeah. So, and remember, Scripture says of those who do not believe the gospel is foolishness. Yeah. So the fact that you're sharing something with an unbeliever and they think it's, a, it's just absurd, Scripture tells you that's going to be the reality of the situation. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, whether, whether or not they have a proper view of the Scripture, a proper view of truth or not, does not in any way hinder us from proclaiming yeah. that truth. Yeah. And so just like we talked about uh, as we walked in the sermon, when we get that and accept that view in our proclamation of the gospel, then we proclaim more boldly. Yeah. We pray more desperately and we love more truly. And I think that comes into this very question. We proclaim the truth and trust the Spirit. Yeah. We're not dependent on them accepting that as truth. Our goal is to worship the one true God in faith that proclaims those things out and trust Him to do a work in their life and for the Spirit to open their eyes to that truth. And so you just go proclaim the gospel yeah. and you do the same thing that you would do. And I think Wes's point is really important. You turn the conversation back to the gospel, mm -hmm. back to the realities of who Jesus is, mm -hmm. and you avoid all those secondary issues mm -hmm. that become a distraction. And yeah. trust God that he can take care of the secondary issues. We don't have to go in with a debate prepared out or a thesis prepared out on yeah. that. Um, okay, so we had a second question, and it was right. this. Starts out, hey friends, that was a sweet way to start a letter, by the way. Hey friends, thanks for your work on the Behind the Message videos. Thank you for saying thank you. Uh, my question is in reference to the word believe. Throughout this chapter, I'm counting eight times that this word is used. Specifically within the context of John 6.29 and John 6.35, what should a correct explication of Jesus' use of the word believe look like? And what implications does that lead us to in regards to belief? So, um, can, go. Wait, wait, real quick. You can answer first, but I want to ask you a question. You can answer, period. No. So, I'm from East Tennessee. Is explication a word? It's explication. I'm unsure. Or is it just a typo for explanation? Yeah, explanation sure. Off camera, we're going to find out the answer to that. We'll come back to you in a minute. Yeah. All right, Wes. No, okay, so question. let's zoom out for just a minute. Really, what we're talking about here, too, is what, what external, what we see on the outside yeah. in conversion that it goes along with what happens on the inside. Yeah. So we said that the Spirit is the one who gives life. That's done in regeneration or when we're born again. And so the external display of that is conversion. There are mm -hmm. two parts to that, really important. Faith and repentance that are inseparable. So belief or faith or trust and repentance. You cannot break them apart. Mm -hmm. uh, they must both be present. If true um, mental and cognitive and uh, conviction level assent occurs in faith, repentance will also always mm -hmm. be married with it. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot have saving faith without Repentance okay. is the first thing I would help us. That's in our statement of faith, the yeah. Baptist faith, the message that these things are inseparable exactly. acts of grace. Yeah. And I'd, I'd add to that too, you get a pretty good definition from Jesus here in John 6. Mm -hmm. 
because they believed in Jesus yeah. enough that they've got on boats, they've walked around. Yeah. I mean, they've done all this stuff seeking him out. But Jesus is clear that they don't really believe in who he actually is. Mm -hmm. They believe in a version of Jesus, but that version of Jesus isn't authentic. Mm -hmm. It's not real, it's not the Son of God, it's not the same version of Jesus that Peter confesses at the end. Mm -hmm. And so they depart, and right. Jesus makes that clear. That's really important for us to realize that there are people who believe in a version of Jesus mm -hmm. that's very close. Man, he can do miracles, he can do great things. He's there to give me goodies, right? Mm -hmm. He's there to feed me, to help me, but it's not the authentic Jesus. It is not the one true God who he and he alone gives life. And Jesus makes that distinction yeah. in John chapter six. So when we talk about that belief that's there, it is a belief that is inseparable from a death to life mm -hmm. you know, scenario. Die to self, repent in faith, find life in Jesus mm -hmm. and Jesus alone. And that's where Peter has that conclusion at the end of John six. So John six is a great explanation. Yeah. Well, and inter later, interestingly too, John is gonna write some letters that are gonna be all about mm -hmm. how you know that your faith is genuine. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. If you say you believe these things, your actions will bear this out. And I don't think that's any coincidence that later, 50 years later, when mm -hmm. John's reflecting on his life and the ministry with Jesus, mm -hmm. he's now saying, okay, I wrote about so things that you would believe, like I read earlier in John 20. And later he's going to say, saving faith is proven by your obedience mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, to, question to number three. Jennifer, back to you. Yes. What is the meaning of Jesus' words in John 6, 63 through 65? What is he working to help the people understand, and what are the implications of his words in these verses for us today? John 6, 63 through 65. Yeah. So I wanted to read those, or at least you know, mm -hmm. go over them really fast. So John 6, 63 through 65 says this, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. And he was saying, For this reason I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. Um, powerful. Um, verse there and that um, I think what's exciting about that is um, it's it's this sense of freedom again and you talked about it when we were when we were talking about the, the whole translation issue and I talked about it with the sovereignty of God issue earlier on and it comes back again and that as we go proclaiming the gospel boldly in complete faith and confidence trusting not in our proclamation, trusting in the truth of the gospel, the power of the gospel, and that God knows exactly um, what is going to happen. We can, we can proclaim boldly in pretty uncomfortable situations at times. Um, sometimes we always want to say we need to be within um, the close context of a relationship or someone that we've known that we've built that relationship with. And that's not all, that's not the case. There are times when we are put in a position with another person, our paths cross, and God says, this is when you proclaim the truth of the gospel. Um, and there is a great example of that. We actually have a, a quick video clip that we're gonna get to share with you um, today. It's by a sweet lady in our church. Her name is Aspen Thompson. And um, you're gonna get to see, you're gonna get to hear her story that pretty much lives out this verse, I think. Um, so we're gonna take a moment just to show you a quick go video. I'm Aspen Thompson, and welcome to the Go Challenge. Recently, I was able to share um, the gospel with a complete stranger. It happened uh, just in a regular day. I was babysitting, and I took the kids to the pool. We met an older woman, and I got to talking with her and realized that she was talking about how it was hard for her to meet new people, and especially since COVID. And so they really felt alone right now um, during this time. When I asked if she went to church, she said that uh, she's Catholic and so she hasn't found one here. And she had asked me what the difference was of Catholics and Christians. And she was genuinely curious. She had no idea. She said where she came from, they were mainly Catholic. And so she had no idea the difference. And so at that point, I decided to share the gospel with her. And so I shared it with her and um, she was intrigued. She, 
she said, you know, I said, if you'd like, you're welcome to come to church with us. And she said, I would really like to do that sometime. So that was kind of an encouraging and challenging time, but I'm excited about my new friend and I continue to pray for her. Uh, I just want to encourage you all, as well as myself, that we continue to stay in God's word. It's so important to share the gospel with others for them to know the truth. Be open to new opportunities in sharing the gospel. They are everywhere. Sometimes we just have to be open to sharing. Remember, you are the evangelistic strategy of the church. It's not some event, it's not some program. You're not, you're not gonna bring them to uh, the pastors, all this. Thing. You go out with the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna encourage you to do a few things. Lean back into the resources that are there for you. Uh, we have got those great go moments to challenge you to just set a goal to turn everyday conversations into gospel conversations. Set a goal for yourself. Let your life group know that goal. Lean into other people and just seize everyday moments. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is when you start trying to do that, it will become much more natural to you once you begin. Mm -hmm. And so it can be as simple as asking the waitress, hey, how can I pray for you? Uh, we're gonna pray before our food, but how can I pray for you? And then as she gives you a way to pray for her, you're able to start talking uh, to her further. Mm -hmm. Pray for those names that are on your heart. Pray that God would give you boldness to share the gospel, that he would go before you and just in the power of his spirit change their life. But go out on mission and make much of Jesus. And so I uh, want to always keep that in front of you as a church, challenge you in that, lean on your life group, get support, but go in that together. You guys got anything to add to that? Great job, Aspen. That was an encouragement. It was yeah. an encouragement. So Sweet. That's awesome. All right, we want to end like we do every week, and um, we want to read Scripture over you and pray Scripture over you. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to um, pray John 6, um, 67 through 69, um, and just pray that over our church family. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Um, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? And Father, we proclaim right now that um, we lack a lot of understanding. We lack a lot of wisdom. But Lord, we resonate with Simon Peter and we say, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And Father God, we want to cling to those words today. We have believed and we have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And we praise you for that. We thank you for who you are in our lives. And we love you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Explication is a word. Webster defines it as the process of analyzing and developing an idea or principle in detail. So yes, that person that submitted that question did use it correctly. Boom.